Steve here with Table Rock Tea Company. Today we harvested a bunch of tea and I am going to show you the next step which is rolling. Actually we already bypassed the other step which was withering but I'll show you what we're going to look for with that. And so uh, yeah let me show you how we roll our tea. So the tea has been withering now for several hours and it's ready to roll. Um, this might be a little bit early, but we're still going to do it. So what you want to do is uh, the tea needs to bunch up into a ball and it needs to smell a little bit fruity. And that's kind of the sign. If you wait too long uh, on the withering and it loses that fruity smell, you're going to lose that nice sweet uh, aroma in the tea. As well. In our shop, we load up these bins. These are actually just... Um, I think they're meat lugs for the, uh, the meat packing industry, um, but that's what we have for our stuff. We've got whole stacks of them here that we use, and that kind of lets us know how much uh, tea we have and how many roller fulls we need to do. This is a CR45 roller, which means that the diameter of the barrel is 45 centimeters. We're gonna load this up pretty full. Um, the more you have it packed, the better typically, but you obviously can't pack it too much. And uh, once we get it loaded, I'll show you what we do with the rolling. So the roller comes in, it clamps, and then the top part presses down. You can see it's this worm drive, it takes a while. Um, it has a spring load on it, so it won't, have, it won't um, put too much pressure uh, down. But as we roll, the leaves are going to compress, and so we'll have to adjust it as we go to maintain the same pressure. And now we roll. As this spins around, of course, it's pressing the leaves. Um, now I know that we're gonna hear a bunch of stuff from tea people all over the world saying that's not how you do it, that's not ready yet, we know all that kind of stuff. This is how we make our tea here. So, you know, you do it your way, we do it our way, that's how that works. Bottom line, make good tea. So I'll show you what we're looking for in just a second. We usually end up doing three cycles of three minutes for us. Again, it just depends on your tea. But what we're looking for is we call it a soaping or a foaming. You can kind of see it's really juicy. And you can see these little like bubbles that are forming on the stainless steel. Um, you can almost hear it too, it's doing a little squeaking noise. But this is nice and soapy. It means it's all the juices and the enzymes are gonna start to work together. Now that the machine has stopped, I'll kind of zoom in. You can see all of this juice and foam. A little more over here. There you go. That's the first uh, cycle. So we are going to raise the machine, unlock it, swing that out of the way. And then we have what we call the dual. Um, that dual here is this big sort of pressed cake. There's going to be a little hole in the middle from the, uh, the dimple of the lid. And between cycles, we go ahead and break it up. That just makes it so that everything gets nice and even. And we're going to go for two more cycles. After we take the dual out, it gets broken up and put onto these uh, perforated baking racks. We spread it out and we kind of have a system now over the years. To basically break up uh, the tea, make sure that it's all um, nice and exposed, but still, again, moist. So that it's going to start the oxidation process. We use the baking racks because we end up putting them into a standard baking proofing oven. So that's uh, essentially our oxidizing chamber is one of these proofing ovens that you'd see in a normal bakery. So that's a brief overview of the rolling process for making black tea or oxidized tea. 
Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned to see what else is brewing here at Table Rock Tea Company.